give them the ability to date them. Right. Uh, right? For sure. So, I'm a flawed human being, but my wife knows 100% chance there's no way I'll be in Moscow with prostitutes having their pee on That's just bizarre. Like, I, I don't, I actually don't need to know any details. I'm not happy. I don't. I'm not, no. I'm not happy with the whole description, but 99 and 100%, is that where you decide to plant the flag? Uh, look, everyone has different opinions, everyone has different personal beliefs, everyone has different views on marriage, and, you know, so to each their own, but uh, like I said, I don't need to know the details of that. Whatever works for James Comey and his wife may or may not work for President Trump and his wife may or may not work for, you know, everyone else in their wife. Like, I, I just feel like to scrutinize someone's marriage... As an FBI works, so that's not why we're writing not why the book. Here. Here. Right. So he doesn't like his answers to what he's giving him. Julie, do you think it's too much of a leap and do you project that other people doing these interviews will have a problem when he says uh, about his reaction, his first reaction uh, after hearing this was he was very angry. And the fact that he, James Comey, did not come back and say, well, this came from the DNC and Hillary Clinton, so take it with a grain of salt. He didn't think it was necessary to say that. As an FBI guy, you don't right. think the source? I, I, well, I mean, first of all, I, I'm one of those who believes that everything should be sourced. I don't love anonymous sources, so that's just a personal belief there. But I, I don't, I think, look, I think Donald Trump, President Trump, has every right to be upset and to be angry at things that are coming out, whether they're true, whether they're false. Like, let him focus on the presidency. There are so many distractions right now. He shouldn't be tweeting on right? it. He shouldn't be tweeting on it. He's not helping himself I by any means. So here is what Trey Gowdy said um, about uh, about what Comey's book has so far revealed. Cut 42. One of the things Director Comey and I did agree on is we need an apolitical FBI. We had some fairly heated exchanges about that. Um, I can't think of anyone that has done a better job of politicizing the FBI than he has in the last 36 to 48 hours by talking about dating bad goggles and the length of the tie. That is beneath the dignity of the offices that he held. So um, I, I'm really disappointed uh, whether or not the intelligence communities vetted this book. I hope he let them do it so he's not disseminating classified information. My guess is he did. But, but, but the writing of the book in general and then some of the things that he's talking about are just frankly beneath the dignity of the really important offices he once held. And here is Dan Gowdy on the very question about shouldn't you know who gave you this information that's so disconcerting and embarrassing, cut 40. Well, of course you would want to know where you got the information because that determines how uh, reliable it is and whether or not it can be used. So we already know the FBI did not vet or investigate the allegations in the dossier. So I, if I was the president, I'd want to know where did you get it uh, and how have you vetted it uh, before, uh, before you used it. Fair. But I thought this would be more challenging. You know, I thought it would be, well, yeah, he has a good point here. Some of the stuff that I've seen out already, I give George Stephanopoulos uh, credit for questioning, why didn't you, he followed up, he said, why didn't you tell him? Don't you think that was necessary? No, he's like, no, I don't think so. It reminded me of those hours of testimony as he sat there, like the Oracle of Wisdom, which I never sit around. No one looks at me and says, you're the Oracle of Wisdom. Well, I do, but I'm, you You've know. never verbalized that. <laughs> you have not. <laughs> we keep asking myself. You do. No <laughs> far, I'm getting that. Um, you don't know why you were invited back. <laughs> You look at Brian Kilmey as the stop sign for keeping you from golfing. Yeah, that's, that's, what, gonna, yes. you know, that's what I'm going to be doing today. As soon as I get home, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, you might be called in. Is, is there a Fox and Friends first on the weekends? No. Okay, I don't want to give anybody any ideas, but if the bombing's tonight, 1-800-Jillian-Mealy, tomorrow morning. But thank you for giving out my phone number. <laughs> it's true. And your license plate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this, this, is, this is unbelievable because we're looking at you putting together a coalition to attack another country oh, yeah. where the Russians are warning us not to. You know, I, I was one of those who believed a couple days ago, earlier this week, that uh, I was with a mindset that I'm not sure that President Trump was going to do anything just yet. Because it would be expected. He doesn't and like some things are simply inexcusable, beyond the pale, and in the worst interest of not just the Chemical Weapons Convention, but of civilization itself. And so the recognition of that means at times you're going to see contrary impulses. So that's, 
Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, saying, listen, I got to get for sure, but we know they were gassed. We know we did it. Yeah. And as uh, we had uh, Dan from the CIA, what's his last name again? Dan uh, Hoffman from the CIA worked in the Russian office, watches Russian television in Russian. He knows it. He said that the fact that they're using choppers right there shows you it's the Syrian government. Nobody else right. has helicopters. Right. It's not really that hard. So we're going in. Uh, I agree. I just I didn't think that we were going to go in right away the day after it happened as everybody was anticipating. Because as I was saying, President Trump doesn't like to do things that are expected. Right? He doesn't like to do things that people say, oh, this is what he's going to do. I'm glad that he sat back, gave it a couple of days, find out all the information. We have more information every single day on this, and now I'm curious to see what he's going to do. All right. Uh, and lastly, the guy that knows the most, who I wish was Secretary of Defense, although I'd miss him in the hall of the lunchroom, General Jack King. Cut 16 on our objective. So if we do the same kind of strike again, we're likely not going to deter him because he has, he's convinced that these these weapons that he uses have military effect and they get results and, and they did in this case because they capitulated as a result of the use of chemical weapons so i think what we have to do now the strategy should be a a different goal not to deter him but to take away his capacity to ever use chemical weapons again because they work right they terrorize and they kill Yes, they do. I mean, you see those images, the ones, you know, that are heartbreaking. You see the images of the kids who have the masks on. They're trying to breathe. They're trying to stay alive. It's awful. All right. Julie Millie's going to stick around, and then she's going to go golfing. Yep. Uh, she has done what, uh, what Ainsley does. You changed before doing radio. I did. Right. That's an interesting tact. You just say to yourself, I'll do radio, but not in this but, outfit. But no, I refuse to do radio in this outfit. I must change. Right. And by the way, have I, have, I have never changed outfits. <laughs> right? Maybe you should. Hey, am I right, Allison? You have, but it was because you did, like, the top butter. Right. And it was full of muck. Yeah. Don't you feel like you should maybe wear jeans, like, make it loose, like, casual? Well, wait, what do I have, a phone booth to come in? I have six minutes to get upstairs. Yeah, okay. Right. Quick. Especially the, the jeans I like are form-fitting. <laughs> right? And they're hard to get on and <laughs> They're really, really squeezed. <laughs> All right. Back in a moment. Now you can go behind the scenes of the Brian Kilmeade Show. Wait, where's the camera? Right there? Yes. Hey, uh, everyone. <laughs> Time to watch the live streaming video of the studio and control room as it happens. Just go to BrianKilmeadeShow.com and click on watch. talk about Super Beats, the powerful superfood drink for cardiovascular health. Well, here's some great news. Now, there's new Super Beats Energy Plus, which teams up beets with another superfood hero, green tea. This exciting new product is made from non-GMO beets plus an added boost from green tea extract, a natural plant-based source of caffeine. New Super Beats Energy Plus helps promote energy, mental focus, and supports a healthy cardiovascular system. Believe me, you'll definitely feel the difference the green tea makes. We're only making this product available to the listeners of our show, so make sure you take advantage of the new release today. Don't miss out, people. Call 800-541-2516 or go to briansbeats.com. With your first order, get another 30-day supply of new Super Beats Energy Plus free and indicator strips to show how it's working for you. Plus free shipping. Call 800-541-2516 and go to briansbeats.com today. Attention business owners and independent contractors. Opportunity to help 